Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I am Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 27th of March. India's central bank slashes rates to counter economic fallout due to coronavirus crisis. Afghan government selects negotiators for talks with Taliban. And Pakistan's volunteer ambulance organization fights coronavirus outbreak with improvised gear. And now for all the details. The total number of coronavirus cases in India has climbed to over 670 with new cases being reported from various parts of the country daily. The nationwide lockdown imposed to contain spread of the deadly virus has also affected the price of daily commodities, leaving customers with no option but to shell out more money. The total number of coronavirus cases in India climbed to over 670 on Friday with reports of new cases in various parts of the country. Coronavirus has so far claimed 17 lives in India, including the latest in the country's central Madhya Pradesh province on Thursday. Amid a 21-day lockdown to tackle coronavirus spread is in place across the country, prices of essential commodities have surged as supplies in markets have been hit. Vegetables in capital New Delhi's biggest markets such as Ghazipur and Azadpur are being sold at comparatively higher prices, leaving customers with no option but shell out more money for purchasing the essentials. This lockdown has been put in place. This is the first time we have to buy the borders. This is the first time we have to buy the Meanwhile, India's health ministry on Friday said that as many as 17 provinces are currently working on dedicated hospitals and wards for the treatment of COVID-19. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan has reported the highest number of coronavirus infections in South Asia with over 1,200 cases and nine deaths. As the government is ill-prepared to tackle the situation, according to health experts, the Edhi Foundation, Pakistan's largest volunteer ambulance organization, has stepped in to help and contribute their bid in tackling the pandemic. Pakistan's tally of COVID-19 patients crossed 1,200 with 429 cases in Sindh and 408 in Punjab provinces on Friday. The virus has claimed nine lives in Pakistan and 23 patients have fully recovered. Meanwhile, despite the lack of proper gear and equipment in the market, volunteer and staff at Pakistan's largest volunteer ambulance organization, the Eidhi Foundation, founded in 1951, say they are making due just fine in their battle against the coronavirus. Using makeshift personal protective equipments made from raincoats and other improvised gear, the foundation has been working around the clock to handle suspected or confirmed coronavirus cases. Volunteers handle dozens of calls a day from people seeking medical advice on the virus. कुछ चीजों में हमने कंप्रोमाइज किया है क्योंकि मार्केट में है नई चीजें और जो अल्टरनेटिव चीज मिल रही हैं ये फुल एप्रेन जो है वो मार्केट में कम है हमने वो भी लेके रखे हैं डिस्पोजेबल भी लेके रखे हैं हमने प्लास्टिक के भी ले लिए हैं उसके इक्वलेंट उससे मिलती जुलती ताकि जो है वो कांटेक्ट्स को से बचा जा सके और उसको डिसइंफेक्ट भी कर रहे हैं हम हम जो है जैसे ही वो इस्तेमाल हो जाता है वो रीयूजेबल है उसको हम स्प्रे कर देते हैं ताकि जो भी इंफेक्शन या कंटामिनेशन है वो खत्म हो जाए मच ऑफ द कंट्री इज ऑलरेडी अंडर अ लॉकडाउन एज पार्ट ऑफ स्वीपिंग मेजर्स टू प्रिवेंट द स्प्रेड ऑफ द वायरस However, earlier Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan categorically ruled out lockdown owing to the economic situation and urged citizens to self-quarantine. Moving on, residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have opposed Islamabad's attempt to set up quarantine centers and shift coronavirus-positive patients in the region, which has a crumbling health infrastructure. People fear that the move might trigger a local outbreak.
people in Mirpur district of the illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir took to the streets recently against Pakistan establishment following its decision to transfer the coronavirus patients to the region. They demanded an urgent rollback of the decision which will allow infected patients to come and quarantine in the privately owned Mohiddin Islamic Medical College in the district. People say there are no medical facilities in the regional hospitals to find the deadly virus and the shifting has diabolic agenda. हम मीरपुर में दूसरे जिला के लोग मरीज नहीं आने देंगे हमारा ये مطالبہ है कि मुजफ्फराबाद में जाएं रावला कोर्ट में जाएं जहां पर इन इनका इंतजाम किया मीरपुर में कोई इंतजाम नहीं है According to reports Pakistan's intelligence agencies have pressurized the locals to not interfere in the work Meanwhile the total number of confirmed coronavirus cases in Pakistan surged to over 1200 on Friday with more than 400 COVID-19 cases reported from Sindh the worst hit region in the country In news from Afghanistan Afghanistan has announced a 21 member team to negotiate with the Taliban in a tentative sign of progress for the United States brokered Afghan peace deal The list announced by the country's State Ministry of Peace would be led by a former National Directorate of Security chief and included politicians former officials and representatives of civil society Five women are also part of the team Afghan government on Thursday announced a 21 member team to negotiate with the Taliban in a tentative sign of progress for the United States brokered Afghan peace deal. The list announced by Afghanistan State Ministry of Peace would be led by Masoom Stanexia, a former National Directorate of Security chief and included politicians, former officials and representatives of civil society. Five members of the team are women. Following the selection of the government's negotiators the next step should be to convene talks with the Taliban as part of a process aimed at ending America's longest war and bringing peace to Afghanistan The United States signed a troop withdrawal deal with the Taliban in February but progress on moving to negotiations between the militant group and Afghan government has been delayed amid the political feud between President Ashraf Ghani and his political rival Abdullah Abdullah as both men are claiming to be Afghanistan's rightful leader following September's election Afghan government announced this week it would begin releasing Taliban prisoners at the end of March edging closer to removing an obstacle to the peace talks with the militant group the Taliban had demanded the unconditional release of 5000 prisoners before starting talks with the government Ghani countered with an offer to free 1500 prisoners and has since said he would release 100 at the end of March The number of deadly coronavirus cases in Afghanistan has crossed over 90 with four fatalities across the country. With most cases reported in Western Herat, authorities have increased efforts to disinfect vehicles and areas of the province. The number of novel coronavirus cases in Afghanistan rose to over 90 with four fatalities due to the deadly virus. Among the two that died on Thursday in Herat province, one had arrived from London. This came two days after a 45-year-old woman lost her life due to coronavirus in the same province. Meanwhile, authorities have increased efforts to disinfect vehicles and areas of Herat, the worst hit province by the pandemic in Afghanistan. Men must be careful of the safe areas. They must use masks, they must wear 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 masks. Herat is a major gateway from neighboring Iran where COVID-19 has killed hundreds of people. In recent weeks, the return of tens of thousands of Afghans from Iran has also increased the risk of possible coronavirus spread in Afghanistan. Nepal Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli was admitted to the Tribhuvan University Teaching Hospital following an increased heart rate on late Thursday evening. Oli's physician Dr Dibya Singh confirmed that the prime minister has been kept under observation at Manmohan Cardiothoracic Vascular and Transplant Center a part of the hospital Nepali prime minister earlier this month underwent a retransplant surgery of his renal which stopped functioning last year Oli's niece had donated her kidney to the prime minister then Moving on to news from Sri Lanka Island nation Sri Lanka is on a lockdown to combat the spread of deadly coronavirus cases in the country as the world battles COVID-19.
State agencies and private sector companies have mobilized to deliver essential food and medicine to residents in the highly populated western province amid the lockdown. In Sri Lanka, state agencies and private sector companies have mobilized to deliver essential food and medicine to residents in highly populated western province amid an indefinite lockdown to combat the spread of coronavirus. Their food was wide-ranging, including Buddhist priests, motorcycle delivery drivers, a bakery and pharmacy, although pharmacies are being kept open during a 24-hour curfew. The three districts of the province, which includes capital Colombo, have been identified as hotspots for the virus. The curfew affects 5.8 million of the 22 million people who live on the island. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan President Gotabaya Rajpaksa has appointed a presidential task force to maintain the civilian life without any hindrance amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The presidential task force was appointed to direct, coordinate and monitor the delivery of continuous services for the sustenance of overall community life, including the supply of food provisions produced in rural areas and producers direct to consumers giving priority. Sri Lanka has 102 confirmed cases of the virus with no deaths. However, a Sri Lankan national living in Switzerland has died on March 25th due to the coronavirus infection. India on Friday slashed interest rates following other central banks in an emergency move to counter economic fallout from fast-spreading coronavirus. The Reserve Bank of India has also ordered all financial institutions to allow a three-month moratorium for all term loans in light of the COVID-19 outbreak and the nationwide lockdown. The Reserve Bank of India or RBI slashed interest rates on Friday following other central banks in an emergency move to counter economic fallout from fast spreading coronavirus. RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das in a media brief announced they are maintaining the accommodative stance and would maintain the position as long as necessary to revive the growth while ensuring inflation remained within the target. Das also permitted banks to provide a three-month moratorium on all-term loans and said it stands ready to provide necessary liquidity and take all measures essential to preserve financial stability in the domestic economy. After extensive discussions, the MPT, MTC voted for a sizable reduction in the policy repo rate and for maintaining the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary to revive growth, mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target. This was the first time in five years that the RBI had acted outside the scheduled dates for policy meetings. The last time RBI cut rates in an out-of-turn move was in March 2015 following a budget announcement. This comes a day after Indian government announced a $22.6 billion stimulus plan that provides direct cash transfers and food security measures. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories once again. India's central bank slashes rates to counter economic fallout due to coronavirus crisis. Afghan government selects negotiators for talks with Taliban. And Pakistan's volunteer ambulance organization fights coronavirus outbreak with improvised care. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend.